Welcome to the regular Westport Fund City Council regular meeting of April 22nd, 2014. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, the Lord's Prayer, and a moment of silence for our men and women who serve in service. capitalize on these types of, of grant funding to help us with our road construction uh, projects. This is a renewal of the state capital improvements program. <coughs> Excuse me. This is no new taxes. This is the renewal uh, to the uh, capital budget. And so we strongly encourage you, uh, and just like Council know, I, I do have all the uh, listings of all the different programs that we put, all the different monies we have received through the years, uh, I believe 26 in total to help us with the city <coughs> forward and obviously it's a great tool that we're using right, uh, right now these days. So just to reiterate that. Um, see. Also, uh, you know, just a little heads up, June 22nd is a pretty special day uh, for the Special Olympics. We'll be here in the city uh, with the law enforcement torch run. And we're grateful to report from all the different uh, law enforcement agencies to help us support those. And we, have, we encourage citizens as well as the council to help uh, support our, our special Olympics. And uh, we will give more information as time permits. Um, also, CHIP grant, uh, you know, there's an ordinance before you that was just handed out by the law director, Mr. Wilbur, I believe. And, uh, uh, this is something that does not need to be passed tonight, but definitely needs to be passed by the next reading. Um, look forward to having those conversations. Uh, concerning that, but there is a public meeting that will be held tomorrow at 1 p.m. for anyone that's interested. And that is it. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, that meeting will be right here in uh, Thompson. Thank you. And there's another one. Yeah. 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 Thirteen. Thirteen. Yes, the 13th of May before the council. So, so there's two public. Okay. You don't happen to make it too much. Um, auditor's report. Thank you. Treasurer's report. My report is passed out tonight, Madam President. Thank you. Law director's report. Thank you, Madam Thank you. Safety Service Director's report. Thank you, Madam President. Um, May 3rd is the citywide cleanup. I think I announced it the last time, but we will have the dumpsters up at the waterworks during that time frame. Uh, I believe we're going to do it from 9 to 3. There will be people there to help unload your vehicles for you when you come up there. So, May 3rd. Remember that the snow appliances and all that stuff, that's through the solid waste district, which they do out to the uh, fairgrounds. But everything else is time to bring. 
May 10th is beach cleanup. We'll be cleaning all along the beach, the Waterworks Park area. I get a lot of help from uh, Mr. Staff's government class. We'll be here to help do that. Um, anybody that wants to help, that would be greatly appreciated. You've probably already seen, but Fulton Street's going to be closed. That project's probably going to be four to six weeks. Um, right now, I think it's closed mostly during the day. And they'll open it up at 6 o'clock at night. By next week, it will be closed permanent because they'll start on the street then also. So, so that everybody knows. We have the detours marked. People in town know that they can go railroad to short and go right to the emergency room. But EMS and everybody has been notified on that. Um, we're still flushing hydrants this week. I think everybody sees that. It's not any water breaks going on. It's the hydrants are being flushed. I saw a lot of cars drive right through it. I saw a couple of people washing their cars. And, you know, <laughs> be very careful, please. It will, it will puddle up a little bit. Be careful on the third lane. I'd also like to thank Mr. Snyder, <laughs> and especially Jen and the girls in the office for the Easter egg hunt. Did a great job. Had a lot of kids here. I think it was a great time up there. So thank you for helping set up. I appreciate it. Jen did a great job. I did. She did it all. So thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Under correspondence this evening, all I have is the treasurer's report. Do I have a motion to accept that? So moved, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Trolley. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I now need a motion to add um, ordinance 10 14 um, to tonight's agenda for its first reading. So moved, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Velo. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Trolley. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, we have no third reading of ordinances and resolutions, nor do we have any second readings of ordinances and resolutions. And with the clerk, please read by title and summary only, ordinance 10-14. Ordinance 10-14, an on ordinance to authorize and direct the mayor of the city of Fort Clinton to procure WSOS Community Action Commission to prepare and submit an application to the Ohio Department of Development for $575,000 under the fiscal year 2014 Community Housing Impact and Preservation Program and declaring an emergency. Does council wish to take any action this evening on ordinance number 1014? Seeing none, we will move that for a second reading to the May 13th meeting. Um, I just wanted to explain a little bit to you about this year's CHIP program, I'm not sure this year under the CHIP program, they cut the funding considerably. You used to be able to apply for over $500,000. Last year, that amount went to $400,000, and that's what the county applied for. This year, they've offered us $300,000, but the change in the program is that they are encouraging partnering with your county entity. And if you did that, you got an extra $50,000. Um, but it also meant that the county then had to shift their funding, but they would also get an additional $50,000 if they did so. Um, so the mayor and I have met, um, along with Don Corley, um, we've met uh, with uh, the president of the commissioners, um, Regal, Jody Regal, um, and then the mayor has met with the commission with the whole group of commissioners. Um, we had to pick a fiscal agent between the city and the county. Um, once they were in agreement that they would partner with us, and they have decided to do that, um, and it's been decided that the city will be the fiscal agent, um, just because uh, we're about to get new money. That was one of the reasons. And also with the changes in their regional planning, uh, they decided it would be better off for us to operate the program. Uh, the program is pretty much the same. We're doing housing repairs. Uh, uh, the one, there were two big changes. No longer, it used to be that if you applied for money and uh, you had several things that had to be done, they have a cap of $25,000. And if they could not do those repairs within the $25,000, they would walk away. They couldn't do anything. Um, now they're allowed to set up a priority um, and do some of the repairs in the house. So that's new. Um, the other thing that's new is that they're going to do a rental rehab program 
so they're now going to be working with landlords to do um, rehabs within rental units, and then the landlord has to put up so much money, uh, the chip program puts up so much money, and the, the landlord pays that money back. So it becomes a revolving loan type thing so that we continue to have money. Um, the one thing that they got rid of is that they have a program called tenant-based rental assistance. Um, they used to um, provide case management to those individuals that were in that program. Uh, that the case management program has been ended. Um, they also had a housing foreclosure program that uh, counseled people that were going through foreclosure and that program was ended. They ended any what they called soft services. They don't come in. So those are the changes. Um, kind of in a nutshell of what's happening with the CHIP program. Tomorrow morning we're having um, a meeting with what they consider the stakeholders in there, uh, the city, uh, some landlords. I think Mr. Holman's on that committee. Um, Salvation Army, uh, Auto Residential Services, all talking about what, how they want the money divided and what they think is important within the CHIP program. We'll do that in the morning and then at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon, we'll have the first, we'll get two public meetings and we'll have a public meeting. And then the next public meeting will take place at 7 o'clock in the morning. So if you're thinking about all this and you have any questions, uh, feel free to get a hold of the mayor and I will answer what we can. Has, has, the, has the city as a whole ever utilized all the funds that they've been allocated? Every time. Every time. Okay. Every time we get it, we never send money back. So. That's a, that's a good thing. Yeah. <coughs> so uh, it's an important program. It's become, uh, it's, and the reason that the money's become less and less is because it's become such a competitive program across the state. And um, I think Don said that uh, when we first started applying for the money, you got points for certain things. Um, and in order to get money, we had to score at least 50 points. Uh, last time we applied for this, you had to score at least 93 points in order to even be considered for money. So it has become a very, very competitive program. And fortunately, we've been pretty competitive. And the fact that now the commissioners are going to join us, that makes it even more competitive. And it'll be interesting to see the city and the county jointly on the program. <laughs> they're, as, they're as excited about it as we are, so that's nice. <laughs> uh, we will now go to business. Unless anybody has any questions, we'll now go to business from before, Mr. Schneider. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just an announcement to everyone the Kiwanis Club of Port Clinton is having their annual spaghetti dinner this coming Friday from noon until 7 p.m. at St. John Lutheran Church on Adams and 2nd in the Parish Hall. Uh, meals are $8 each. Uh, you can get them for both lunch and dinner. Dine in, carry out, or delivery available within the 43452 zip code. Um, I forgot my tickets, but I believe I heard Mr. Hansen selling his tickets earlier tonight, so he may have some tickets. They're also available at the door. Sold out. Sold out, okay. Sold out. okay. <laughs> um, they are available at the door. This coming Saturday, statewide, is Operation Take Back Prescription Drugs. I'm going to put my old emergency services hat back on for a moment and do a pseudo tip from the chief. Although this, this is a statewide program that happens once every uh, now and then throughout the year, just a reminder, there is a prescription drop-off bin in the lobby of the police station. So when you're doing your spring cleaning and you come across those old prescription drugs, bring them down to the police station. You can put them in the bin in a secure spot so they're properly disposed of. Thank you for mentioning the, the citywide cleanup. Um, and then throughout the entire month of April, our friends at the Friendship Food Stores on Buckeye Boulevard and out at Southeast Catawba Road on, on the Portage Township are selling raffle tickets for a $500 gas card uh, with the proceeds to benefit the 4th of July celebration here in the area. Uh, raffle tickets are a dollar each, six for five, and can be purchased at either one of those. Uh, those stores are having a competition amongst themselves, or I did, Remember to bring those tickets so if anyone 
interested in those tickets, again, that will take place throughout the entire month of April with the drawing on May 1st. Uh, and then finally, as you can see, and you commented earlier, he was wearing coat and tie. May is the official start of the summer season in my business, so I will not be dressed like this for council meetings. So <laughs> just wanted to put everybody on, 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 on alert. So I may be coming directly from the office from now on, and I don't dress like this at the office. With that, I thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Mr. Ackerman. Thank you, Madam President. I have a question for uh, Councilman Snyder. Um, the uh, prescription drug box, um, if I have expired children's cough syrup, does that count? I believe they will take that. It's just, okay. it's, it's like a large mailbox and you just set it inside and then they'll sift through. Don't pour it in there. The whole <laughs> <laughs> Please don't avoid it. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, a couple other announcements. The uh, Parks Recreation Cemetery meeting on May 13th uh, will take place at 6:30, but we plan to make that a short meeting due to the uh, uh, public meeting of the uh, chip bonds. Okay, so uh, keep that in mind if you plan on attending that meeting. It's going to end early so we can attend the public session of the chip funds meeting at 7. And uh, a couple months out, but time enough to mark the calendar and clear the weekend, or at least today, that weekend is August 2nd. That's a Saturday. Um, that will be the annual West End Community Picnic and 3 on 3 tournament. Um, working on some fun things. The, uh, I believe the chief has already committed to uh, spending some time in the dump tank. Um, we're hoping to get the mayor back in the dump tank this year. Uh, it depends on his health, obviously. Uh, last year, I spent uh, quite a bit of time in the dump tank, only to be dumped by my kids, because apparently no one knew I was going to be in the dump tank. So if you'd like to uh, take a couple cheap shots at me, that's a great place to do it for a good cause. It'll be my second time in the dump tank this summer. So uh, <laughs> keep that day open. Um, and I'll have some more information about that as the date gets closer. Thank you, Madam President. This is Sarvi. Excuse me. Uh, I want to extend uh, my sympathies to the friends and family of Julie Quayle who passed away over the weekend. Uh, she was my eighth grade teacher here in Port Clinton. And she was absolutely terrific. So I don't hesitate to say that she was one of the very few uh, great ones that we had in school. I'm sure many of my classmates would agree. Uh, I spoke about her in my graduation speech, rightfully, so I would do her a disservice if I didn't speak about her today. And uh, to her ability to capture the attention and love of an eighth grade class way back in 1997. I will miss her. Um, last week I attended the grand opening of Cielo Grande downtown and had a great meal there the Saturday before. Uh, it's encouraging to see a new restaurant in downtown. Good food is one of the reasons I visit other communities. It's about the only reason I go to downtown Sandusky, so they have tattoo parlors. So <laughs> I'm glad that we have a new establishment. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Charles. <laughs> <laughs> We thank you, Madam President. Uh, the Emergency <laughs> Services Committee met last week, and one of our topics was the uh, renewal of the liquor licenses within Portland city limits. Um, our committee would like to make the following motions related to this topic, please. I move we waive our right to object to the renewal of a liquor permit for the our guest inn and suites located at 220 East 2nd Street. Or East Perry Street, I'm sorry. Thank you. Do I have a second to Mr. Trolley's motion? I'll second that motion, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Rockerman. Any discussion? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. And the reason they're making that uh, motion for that one property, uh, I'm going to abstain from the vote, uh, although I don't receive any uh, financial benefit from that particular property. It is owned by my employer. So I will be abstaining from this vote. Any further discussion? Would the court please call the roll? Margaret Phillips? Yes. 
Lisa Sardi? Yes. Ron Ackerman? Yes. Kate Vila? Yes. Nicole Freitas? Yes. Jerry Turoli? Yes. Thank you. Have motion. Yes, I have another motion, Madam President. I move we rip waive our right to object to the renewal of all remaining liquor permits within the city of Fort Point. Do I have a second to Mr. Trolley's motion, Mr. Snyder? I'll second that, Madam President. Thank you. Any discussion? We discussed this, as I said, in the committee, and I discussed it with Chief Hickman, and they've had no overwhelming problems with any of the establishments in town. So there's no problem renewing, renewing all the permits. Could the clerk please call the roll? Ron Ackerman? Yes. Abe Bilo? Yes. Nicola Freitas? Yes. Lisa Sardi? Yes. Mike Snyder? Yes. Margaret Phillips? Yes. Jerry Trulli? Yes. Anything else to see, Mr. Phillips? Yes, I have a few more <coughs> items. I would like to uh, congratulate Port Clinton for their 25 years of Street City, USA. Uh, we got a plaque that Captain Larry Holman and I attended a uh, Tree City, USA Awards banquet. I think, uh, Tracy, you got you have that time too? Okay. Also, related to that, Arbor Day is Friday, this coming Friday, the 25th, at 5.30 at the Senior Center. We will be planting three trees. Love to see uh, quite a showing. In case of rain, rain date is the Monday following, would be the 28th. Uh, a couple more items. Cemetery fundraiser, Friends of the Cemetery, I should say. Fundraiser is Sunday at Ida Rupp, one to four. It's an antique appraisal. Two item, maximum $5 per item. We'll have five appraisers there to uh, let you know what your antique is worth. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. DeFritis. I have nothing to Thank you, Ms. Phillips. Thank you, Madam President. For those who, re who didn't or didn't receive a Ward 3 voting change of address place, uh, those of us in Ward 3 will now be uh, voting at Peace Luther rather than at the high school, at Portland High School. The second thing, uh, the library levy, Ida Rupp Library levy, reduces Fort Clinton's cost per household to about 50 cents a week by spreading this out over the others who also use it, which are, includes Put Bay, Middle Bass, Danbury, for instance. So we're going to be sharing the costs a little bit more with the expansion of the library. And anybody who has seen our library knows how lucky we are to have what we have, because it is excellent. And I, too, work with Julie Quayle. We just talked before she went to Florida. I mean, it's just you, how life is short. And the last thing is, after this is over with today, Mr. Councilman Bilo is going to show us all his tattoos. <laughs> Again? <laughs> um, Senator Gardner's here this evening, and he has to have a little time. And fortunately, we had a short agenda and we were concerned whether he was going to get here in time. Yeah. <laughs> Where do I stand? Is it in particular? You're, you're comfortable. Okay. Well, uh, I appreciate that very much, and I think I was. How was I going to follow that? And I was going to, and I was going to say, I emphatically, I have no tattoos. And no, I'm not going to provide the proof. <laughs> but, uh, but I thank you. Uh, I, I called the mayor today and, and asked if it might be possible for me to stop by. I was at another uh, township meeting earlier and uh, was hoping just to stop by. Um, some of you I know fairly well. Some of you I haven't, don't know that I've met before. And. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, if you live in Ottawa County, you're my boss, and uh, I need to report to my bosses and, and listen. And uh, so that's part of what I'm doing. We uh, we are, the news reports say that the Senate is in, in recess, and uh, so I, I totally reject that term. I say, I call it the district work period. And so I figure if I'm gonna call it that, I better be out working. So I've been uh, quite a few local government meetings. I think this might be about my 10th since last Monday, actually. Uh, just in this county, and uh, 
but I wanted to come and at least make sure that you all had my business card and to make sure also that you were getting my emails. Um, I hope you all are on email and are getting them. If not, let, let my office know. Once in a while, someone doesn't get one and they believe it's intentional and it's never intentional. You have to go rise to a really high level to get to be intentionally left <laughs> off my mailing list. So, uh, and certainly nobody here is in that boat. So uh, please do that. And um, I did want to also just, just say briefly that um, uh, I've got a, five counties, um, about 125 miles west to east. I, I'm on the Fulton Williams County line and all the way to Vermilion. Um, about 800 local government officials. So it's it's a big district, it's, it's difficult, but I signed up for it. And uh, I'm actually in Port Clinton quite a bit. In fact, I was in Port Clinton last night um, at the school board meeting and also at uh, Portage Township. And uh, But I'm over here quite a bit and if there's um, an issue or just a concern as an elected official that you wanna meet with me, it doesn't have to be a formal council meeting, um, I'd be glad to do that. And uh, I just offer that <coughs> to you and um, my, my attitude is that we, we serve the same constituents. We're just, we're equal partners in public service. And if I'm gonna say that, uh, I need to, to live up to that commitment. So um, I, I wanna be able to do that. I did tell the mayor, I think the last time I was at a Port Clinton council meeting, I think, Madam President, you were still, you, you were president at that time. I, I've been here a long time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that wasn't all that many years ago. But, but I remember I remember the meeting was like an hour and a half, and it was pretty contentious, as I recall. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I can't good. imagine that in Port Clinton uh, that uh, that would happen. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, I did want to at least to, to do that, make myself accessible to meet some folks. Some of you I know, I think one, and I don't, I don't want to embarrass myself to get it wrong, but uh, Mr. Colston, you play basketball here, uh, Drew. Um, okay, I do, re I do remember the very, very, very good basketball player here. Uh, uh, and I know that name. I don't know if we actually played again. We scrimmaged. I played at Eastwood. We may have scrimmaged Port Clinton a couple times, but, uh, but uh, I don't think we actually played in the regular season. But, uh, um, but what, what I will do now is just say that the only thing uh, pending legislatively, there are two things really. One is a state issue that's on the ballot May 6th, which had good, strong bipartisan support. So I'm not going to tell you uh, how to vote on that, but I think it's a positive uh, program for local government infrastructure. It was a very strong bipartisan vote to put it on the ballot, and um, I think it's been good for local government because bureaucrats in Columbus don't make the decisions. Local district integrating committees make, make those decisions. Local elected officials help make those decisions. So uh, that is on the ballot May 6th. It's, it's kind of a quiet election year so far, it seems, and uh, but that is at least one issue that will be on the ballot. And the other thing I would say is I've been, um, uh, I know there are, there's energy in this city. Uh, there are things happening. Um, and um, one issue that I, and I, and I will preface it by saying that I don't think it's the role of the state senator or state representative to, to say what they're for or not in a particular village or city or, or, or county to try to basically tell a city council what it ought to do. Um, and so I, I would never do that. Um, but I do believe if you're moving forward on a project and it's the will of the council and the will of the city and the, the elected leadership is, is supportive, I want to be supportive of those projects. And it appears to me, I hope I'm not wading into a, a difficult issue, but the Madison Street transportation project seems to me to have a lot of uh, positive support and energy. It has the potential for a relatively small investment, I think, to value add to the city and do other things that would help perhaps with jobs and development. And and um, so I would, I'll, I'll admit publicly that I've met with the uh, deputy director um, of District 2 on, on this project, as well as had a conversation with uh, uh, the chief of staff with the Ohio Department of Transportation. I know there are meetings later this week on that subject. And uh, so I'm aware of it. Uh, it. It appears to me to be a strong project. I, I believe it has strong backing from the from this from this uh, council, um, I hope it does. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor's told me it does. No, no. Uh, but I know there are other issues to be decided in this community. Maybe all those decisions haven't been made yet, but there's opportunities here. And again, I am not going to be one that presupposes how, what you ought to do and where, where you ought to do it with certain properties or with certain projects. Uh, but if there is something where you come together as a community, I, I want to be supportive. This, this community has had some tough times, but it's got just tremendous potential, and uh, I'd love to be, in a small way, uh, a part of that, a, a 
part of that future if I can. And uh, so, um, with that, um, that's kind of my brief brief comments, uh, uh, Madam President, and Mr. Mayor. And uh, and uh, if those of you have questions or comments, uh, uh, now I'm getting educated uh, the last two weeks, especially getting <laughs> lots of uh, lots of feedback from my uh, from my local government colleagues. Does anybody at all? I don't know if this is appropriate to ask if anybody has questions or, or, questions. or comments. And uh, uh, are you toward the end of your meeting by any chance? Are you? I, I will stay for a few minutes if you have something one on one. I'll be glad to, to meet with you. And uh, if there's something you'd prefer to, to share with me um, personally or in a small group, I'd be glad to do that too. I don't have any other, I'm not rushing off to another one tonight. Last <laughs> night I had four and it was in half hour increments, and it was just perfect. But uh, this is it tonight. So. If I could just thank the Senator, I mean, you don't know the work that he's actually done behind the scenes to help us along mm -hmm. in downtown revitalization. We talked about Madison Street. Uh, we really appreciate your input and talking with ODOT and help us to move forward. So, we, we, with all due respect, really appreciate all your help. Well, thank you. I, I'm working with you. Thank you. I appreciate working with you. And, and the, um, I'm not inherently an optimistic person, but I, I sense some. I sense there's reason to be optimistic. I think. I think uh, the leadership here has presented a strong case, and in, in working with others, that uh, uh, that we've got a real shot here. Um, and finding innovative ways. Uh, there may be. A, there may be several different uh, uh, areas of, of funding that we may have to pull together to make it happen. But I'm, I'm optimistic we can get there. I'm. I'm, I'm I hope we can. I'll be disappointed if we don't. I'll go with <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be disappointed if we don't. I'll be disappointed if we don't because uh, I think uh, there have been differences in the past here, and sometimes things maybe perhaps haven't happened because of some some, some of those differences. But uh, I don't. At least with that transportation project and what that can then yield for the city, I don't. I don't sense that. In this city. Well, I think it's great that we have a council that doesn't have their own agenda. Their agenda is for quite so. Anybody else at all? If not, I'll be around to meet with you personally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Members of the audience, Mr. Yonke. Jerry Yonke, 117 Cedar Street. Uh, in front of you, you have two judgments against Mike Rose which makes for interesting reading. I hope you guys kind of go through this and with the negotiations coming up, you know, really uh, try to figure out what, 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 what he was up to. Uh, a number, the first judgment against Mike Rose and Washington property jointly and severed, severally for the sum of $3 million, which is comprised of $2.9 million in principal and $118,000 in incurred interest through October 2009, plus interest on the balance, principal balance. Now that's National City Bank versus Mike Rose. And then fifth third against Mike Rose, judgment in favor of a bank against Mike Rose in the amount of $1.9 million plus interest. Now this, is, this all happened back in 2009 and I hope you, you can get an explanation from um, Mike Rose what his intentions really were in this. But I hate to see the, you guys going into negotiations with uh, somebody that has the experience of defaulting on loans. Thank you, Madam President. Anyone else this evening? Yeah, Charles Chief, 316 Lincoln Street. Could you stand up, Mr. I need some road repairs down our back. Huh? I need some road repairs on Linden Street down our back. He needs road repairs on Linden Street. And I am looking at the I am looking at the safety service. <laughs> you can't you, you can't even go down State Street. I got it's not it's not potholes, it's, it's uh, sinkholes. You can't come down Third Street, it's sinkholes. I mean it, it's not a road, it's an alley. And nothing ever gets done until we we surface Perry Street and shoot it up and put it on my street. I, mean, I pay $775 a year of property taxes and minimum water bill every month and nothing ever gets done that road. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else this evening? It's an unimproved street, is that correct? Yes. Yes, okay. 
we have paths and like he said, he used to correct because he put stuff down in the ground and rolled it and done all that. And it does not shrink up. I mean, there's, they're, they're not potholes. They're, it's the whole width of the road. Yeah. 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 Yes, I'd like to ask the mayor what is going on down at the Jet Express with their new construction. I see where they're taking the siding off the um, the old uh, rack storage building, and I heard that there was a restaurant going in. Or is this uh, I'd like to give you all those details. I really don't know them on top of my head. I can kind of a little bit. Um, there's the enhanced right now. The first phase phase is enhanced. Um, like passenger waiting area is what they're doing. There's a few different phases that I'm not totally sure what, but what they're doing right now is just enhancing the waiting area. Okay, they're going to imp they're improving. Right Correct. Now. Okay, okay, cool. Yep. Good. Thank you, Mr. Reeves. Uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I live on Short Street, coming down Fulton. You need to okay. state your name and address. Oh, Jim Weaver, 518 Short Street. Uh, you say, yeah, you turn around railroad, that's short to the hospital, but there's no sign saying that. The hospital. As soon as yeah, they okay. close it all the way off, they will put that up. Because I know when I come down there and I see this detour sign that way, I'm thinking, what if somebody's going to the hospital? Going to yeah, and, and EMS has been notified of that already. Okay. So they've already been called. But yes, they will be. <coughs> Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Seeing that, I'll call for a motion to adjourn, Mr. Snyder. Madam President, I move this August body adjourn. I'll take a second. Thank you, Mr. Trolley. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We're adjourned.